whichever dimension you recorded it. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is introduce yourself to your patient. Hi, my name is Leshawn from the lab. I'm going to be doing some tests from you today. Can you please tell me your name? I'm Monique Luna. Can you spell that for me, please? M O N I Q E L U N A. And your ID number? 0421. Date of birth? November 3rd, 1991. Okay. Are you right handed or left handed? Right handed. Have you ever passed out or fainted when giving blood? No. Are you allergic to latex? No. Okay. So I'm introducing myself to my patient, letting them know I'm from the lab. Then you want to ID your patient. So they tell you who they are. Just because they say they're somebody, you actually want to make sure that you look at the armband. She says she's Monique Leon. I need to actually have her spell that for me. It needs to match. Birth date needs to match. If it doesn't match, then that's not my patient. Okay. So then the three questions. Are you allergic to latex? Have you ever passed out or fainted when giving blood? Are you right-handed or left-handed? It doesn't matter which order you ask them in, that you ask them is the important thing. Okay. The question, are you right-handed or left-handed? The reason that I ask that is because I prefer to try and stick in the non-dominant arm first. Because if you stick in the dominant, then people get up, they grab a purse, they open a door, they start using it immediately, which means hemostasis doesn't take effect. So they get up, they start using it, that hole in the arm doesn't close immediately. So now then they say, well, I have a hematoma. Well, you have a hematoma because you used it immediately. So I ask, are you right-handed or left-handed? I ask, have you ever passed out or fainted when giving blood? Because I want to know that. If they've ever passed out or fainted, then that's what I want to do. I want to take them over to the bed. I want to lie them down and draw them in the bed. Most of your labs have recliners that actually recline back, so you could actually draw your patient in the recliner. And then, are you allergic to latex? Of course, we don't want to use any latex gloves or latex tourniquets if they have a latex allergy. But again, most of your labs are latex free. Okay? So, she's going to give me her arm. Remember, we said we want our tourniquet to be two to three fingers above where we're going to stick. So, if we're sticking in the anacube, we're here. I mark off two to three fingers, so my tourniquet should be right around here in the bicep area. Again, we're going to pull tension, tie it like a shoe. We want to make sure that there is no rolling around the arm, so it just rolled. So, what we have to do is retie it. We don't want it to roll because it pinches the patient's skin when it does that. Okay, I'm going to have you make a fist with this arm and put it up under this elbow. What that does is hyperextend the arm out so that it helps to bring the vein to the surface a little bit. Then I'm going to go ahead and palpate. So, she has a median. She has a cephalic, but it doesn't feel as good as the median. She has a fabulous basilic. <laughs> So, as a phlebotomist, we always want to stick what feels good to us. So, I'm actually going to stick her basilic vein. Remember, tourniquet time is a minute or less. I'm going to go ahead and unpop that. Now, I'm going to start to get my supplies together. First thing that I want to do is go ahead and cleanse my site. I'm going to use concentric circles. So, I'm going to start inward and make a bullseye and go out. I'm going to set that to the side because if I need to repalpate, I can touch my finger to alcohol, repalpate the site before I stick the site. Big vein, big needle. Her basilic vein is a really good vein. So I'm going to go ahead. When you want to set the alcohol pad on the other side since you can't cross over? I'm sticking right. Oh, okay. Everything is to my left. <laughs> Alrighty. Two that's, by twos. That's for viewers. You want to get two, two by twos. You're going to put them together, fold them in half, and then you fold them in quarters or in fours. This is going to be what actually helps to put your pressure onto your site. Most of your standalone sites use Coban, so your Sonorquest, your lab cores, your hospitals use taper band aids. And the reason why they do that is because sometimes patients are not quite conscious and they don't want the cold band to be on the arm for an extended amount of time. So you want to get enough cold band to go around the patient's arm around one and a half times. And then I need my tube. Okay. 
So everything that I need is to the right of me. I'm going to go ahead left <laughs> of me. Huh, my military left. Okay. So put my gloves on. Gonna retie my tourniquet. Again, want that to be nice and snug. Tourniquets restrict venous, allow arterial. If I want to repalpate, I have to touch my finger to the alcohol, repalpate my site. Gonna let that dry so we don't have hemolysis. I'm gonna anchor back, stick quick, relax my fingers, put my tube on. Ah. No flow. She said, ah. <laughs> <laughs> Ah. Now, what I just did was a redirect, and that's very common. You actually want to redirect the tube before automatically terminating the draw. And a lot of patients say, oh, I don't want anybody fishing in my vein. Well, we're not fishing. I have no bait on my tube. Okay? It's actually a redirect. Okay? So, tourniquet time. Still important. So, what I'm going to do is TTN. Tourniquet off first, tube out of my needle holder. I'm going to take it, set it off to the side, and then my needle out of the skin. I'm going to hold above the site, come out quick, click close, drop into the sharps. Now I'm going to have my patient hold this for me, and then I'm going to invert my tube. Remember we said this is not a martini, so it's not shaking. It's inverted, so we're going to invert eight to ten times. Down and up is one inversion. Okay. <laughs> so, when you label your tubes, you want your stopper to face towards the left, even if you're left-handed. You still want the stopper top to face towards the left because what happens when people pick them up, we pick them up and we read from left to right. Okay. So now I'm going to put my patient's information on here. And it should be done with a Sharpie in black or blue. So my five things that go on my patient's tube are my patient's name, my patient's ID number, today's date, which is 2-12-2-11-15. The time is 11.30. And I'm doing military time, so therefore I don't have to put an A or a P behind it. And my initials. So the five things are patient ID, patient name, date, time, and my initials. What I'm then going to do is actually turn my tube up to my patient and ask my patient to verify if the information is correct. Okay. Okay. Going to set that off to the side. I'm going to actually look at my patient's site, make sure that it's not bleeding excessively. If your gauze has excessive blood on it, then what you want to do is actually make another pressure gauze bandage and change them out before you actually wrap your coband. And coband sticks to itself, so it doesn't have to be wrapped extremely tight where it's cutting off the circulation. Okay. So then I let my patient know that they need to keep that on for approximately 5 to 10 minutes. And then I thank my patient for coming into the lab. If you have six tubes... That patient has to verify all six tubes. They have to look at all six tubes and make sure that the information is correct on each tube. You can't hold all six of them up at one time and say, can you verify these? <laughs> you have to do them one by one. Okay? Any questions? Awesome.